while ago, I did a review on the Synology RS822 Plus One U NAS system, and overall, I thought it was great. If you want to check out that video, link down in the description below. But I did have three issues with that device. One is that there were no 2.5 gig ports, and there weren't any 10 gig ports, obviously. The next is that there's no built in NVMe slots for NVMe caching, and third, it shipped with two gigabytes of RAM. Luckily, one of my viewers saw this and said, hey, I have just the device for you and sent me over the Synology E10 M20T1. And what this is, is a PCI expansion card that solves two of these issues because it gives me a 10 gigabit RJ45 port and two NVMe slots. And to solve the RAM issue, obviously I'm just upgrading it with more RAM. So let's take a look at this device and see what we are working with. Okay, yep, nicely packed. Got some propaganda. Thermal pads, screws, don't lose those. A sexy little heat sink and the device itself. So as you can see, we have the 10 gig port up here and then on the back or front or whatever side this is, you can see our two NVMe slots. But which NVMe drives do we go with? Uh, you can see I have four here, but two slots. Why do I have this? Well, I wanted to show you my two options. So I did have the option of going with two one terabyte Samsung 980 Pros, or I just picked up some Intel Optane drives. These are the 50 or 60 gigabyte, uh, 58 gigabyte versions. Which one do you think I'm going with? Now, originally I was thinking about going with the Samsung's, but one terabyte of caching is so overkill. Now, if you put these in here, I don't blame you. I mean, they'll be solid, but I figure that's a waste for caching. So I am gonna go with the Optane drives. They have really high endurance, really good speeds, and 60 gigs of caching should be plenty enough for my use case. So let's go ahead and get these installed. All right, how do these guys go in here? Now, you would probably say, Brett, why don't you read the instructions? And I have a really good answer for that. Um, it's because I'm an idiot. Okay, we probably need a screwdriver. No, I'm not cool enough to have an LTT one, sorry. Um, am I stupid? Oh, it's because I'm a freaking idiot. This isn't even small enough. All right, that was too big. Let's try a smaller drive. <laughs> About a nickel every time I heard that, am I right, boys? <laughs> okay, yeah, that feels better. Neat. And for the RAM, we are going with two 16 gigabyte sticks of uh, Nemix RAM. Nemix, the number one authority in RAM. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, <laughs> but yeah, this did have decent reviews. It is DDR4 ECC, and I don't remember how much I paid for it. I will uh, put that right, right here. But yeah, we can't install any of this without the actual device. So uh, let's go get that. All right, there she is. And you may notice that no, I am not using the uh, rack ears. I have it sitting on a one U shelf, which does make it easy if I wanna do upgrades. I can literally just slide it out. So uh, let's do that and bring it upstairs. Oh, didn't see you there. Oh, this? <laughs> Just a total babe magnet. All right, here she is. And luckily it should be a relatively easy install. We just have to undo these four screws and slide it off, maybe slide. Oh, slides this way. All right. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is upgrade the RAM, which should be relatively easy. So you can see there's only one stick in here. I literally just broke it. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, whoops. I hope it still clips in. Oh my God. All right, the bottom one should be good because that one is still intact. Clip. Now for the, mo <laughs> the moment of truth. Okay, it still clips in. We're good. I think we're gonna be good, but uh, yeah, I broke this piece off of the side, which is a little latch for one of the sides, but luckily it still clips in. Okay, let's see if we can do this next upgrade without breaking the system. So yeah, so here is the PCI slot. So what we should be able to do is just easily slide this in here and be able to access it via the PCIe slot in the back. 
you know, we already broke something today. Why not break something else? All right, that's fine. This should just slide on in like so. All right, that was actually really easy and uh, idiot proof. All right, let's pop the uh, top back on and put it back in the rack. Okay, everything is set up and working. Here I am in my control panel. So the first thing we're going to actually do is go in here, go to Info Center and confirm that uh, at least we see our RAM upgrade and yep, 32 gigs of total physical memory, neat. Next thing we are going to do is go into Network, Network Interface, and yep, we now see an extra LAN device, which is our 10 gigabit connection. If we click on that, or double click rather, network status, 10 gig. So we are now two for three. And the last thing we want to check is that our NVMe drives are detected. So we are going to go back into Info Center, then under storage, you can see here are our far, far, here are four drives, and then our two cache devices, which are the two NVMe drives. Now they aren't initialized, so let's go ahead and set those up. So we're going to go into Storage Manager. Here is our volume. Click on that. We'll click Create. Create SSD Cache. We're going to mount that on Volume 1. We only have one. Read Write Cache or Read Only Cache. We are going to do a Read Write because we have two SSDs. Um, if you only had one, you could do Read Only. When you're doing Read Write, it will cache writing. So that's why you want two so that they're mirrored in case one fails. You don't lose your writes. So. We are going to use read write. Yep, looks good. Yep, boom, cache drive is enabled. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's still, it's still waiting. Yeah, we're not gonna sit around and wait for that to finish. What we are going to do next is make sure that we change our static IP from our old network interface on the one gig port to the new one on the 10. So let me explain. Let's go back into network network interface. So this is our static IP address 10.0.0.82. You can see we've been assigned a new one on our 10 gig interface. So I have my static IP set up in PF sense. So let's log into there. So here we are in our DHCP server. If we go down, you'll see here is the static IP of our Synology RS-822, and that is to the one gig connection. So we are going to remove that, and then we are going to go into DHCP leases, and we are going to find the one that has been assigned to our 10 gig, which I think was 1.182 or something, 1.189. IP address, we are going to set that to the 82, and now we are going to go in here and reboot. You could probably do this a different way, but you know what? It, it reboots pretty quickly. All right, it just finished restarting. If we go back into control panel, back to network, back to network interface, just like that, our 10.0.0.a2 is on the 10 gig, and we are free to remove this one gig one uh, from the network configuration or just unplug it. So we have NVMe caching, 10 gigabit networking, and now we have 32 gigabytes of RAM which means we can finally utilize virtual machines on our Synology. If you watched the video before, with our two gigs, we couldn't even spin up a single virtual machine. So now we have an Ubuntu virtual machine running. We have plenty of RAM to utilize it. We have plenty left over. And now we can spin up a bunch of VMs or allocate a bunch of resources to our Docker containers and utilize our hardware to its full potential. So. Overall, I am happy with the upgrade. All in, it's a couple hundred dollars, but if you're spending $1,000 on your NAS, maybe a couple of hundred isn't so bad. I do wish that some of these were included in the RS-822 Plus already, but you know, they aren't, it is what it is. In terms of the 10 gig, I am now seeing a major improvement in file transfer time since we have a full fat 10 gig connection. I can straight up edit videos straight from my NAS, straight from my Synology, which is freaking awesome. So more on that later. Uh, I do have a video in the works showing you how I do an entire workflow on my Synology device from starting, editing, backing up, and everything down the line. So stay tuned if you wanna see that. But yeah, so overall, I think it was a success. I literally just broke it. If you liked the video, then drop a like below. 
If you like content like this, then consider subscribing. It helps the channel out a ton. And I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my PCIe add-in card with NVMe caching and 10 gig networking. You guys are awesome. That's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.